everyone! So this week I'll be talking about the Millennium series by Stieg Larsson, better known as The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played with Fire, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. The only copy I have on hand right now is the second book because the first one I'm loaning out to a friend and the third one I only checked out from the library. I bought the first book after Christmas with a gift card that I'd received because I was really interested in the series, especially seeing as it had been made into movies in two different countries, and I ended up really liking the series. I did get a bit bored at the beginning of the first book because it's just a lot of economics and politics, but once you get past the first three chapters, it gets like really amazing. The first part is pretty necessary just to set up everything that happens in the rest of the series. So if you plan on reading the books, don't skip it. It's really important. If you don't already know, the book is basically about the lives and relationship between the two main characters, Mikhail Blankvist and Lisbeth Salander. Mikhail is a journalist who works on and co-owns Millennium Magazine, hence the name of the series and he is hired to solve a murder mystery with his investigative skills and through that process he meets Lisbeth Salander. Lisbeth is incredibly intelligent but she is also a very different kind of person. She keeps to herself a lot and throughout the book we don't really learn too much about her history but she's a really interesting character and I really like her. The storyline for the first book is pretty self-contained and it ties itself up at the end, but the second two books are very much two parts of the same story. Quite some time passes after the first book, and in the second we learn much more about Lisbeth and her past. The writing is very straightforward, there's little metaphor or poetry to be found, but it's not at all boring. It's definitely the kind of book that you can't put down once you get into it. The narrative perspective shifts a lot between Mikhail and Lisbeth and other minor characters, and that makes it very interesting. It doesn't shift every chapter or in a predictable way, which results in the reader never really knowing what's going on 100%. Stig Larsson is very good at giving you just enough information to make you feel like you might know what's going on, but then cut off right before you get the answer and it very successfully leaves you wanting more and reading on. I didn't find it annoying in a bad way at all. As far as the characterization, I absolutely love the main characters. They have flaws aplenty, but it makes them human and so relatable. Even Lisbeth Slander, who is so unique and whom I have very little in common with, I still felt like I related to her so well. And at some points in the book, you just feel like no one else understands her like you do. The books definitely aren't the typical man saves woman, they fall in love, and live happily ever after. Lisbeth is her own hero, and I love that about her. Stieg Larsson also blurs the line between who's good and who's bad. The stereotypical heroes like men or the police or government security aren't always the good guys, and the heroes of the story don't always use typically moral means of bringing justice to those who deserve it. And in that way, the series is so real. It doesn't idealize life or crime. It doesn't hold anything back. It's not lighthearted, but it definitely has its darkly humorous moments. If you've got a weak stomach and you don't like reading about violence or graphic descriptions, then this book probably isn't for you. I have to admit it isn't the kind of book I would usually go for, but I really loved it because it's just that good. And that goes for the whole series, not just the first book. After reading each book, I watched the Swedish movie adaptation since it was on Netflix Instant. And the first movie stayed very close to the book. They did a great job and I really liked it. With each movie though, they took out more and changed more, especially with the third one. And it was a bit disappointing. I'm not usually the type of person to whine when things get changed or left out, but since they did such a great job with the first one, it was just kind of a letdown with the second and especially the third one. 
The third one I even found a bit boring because there's just less action and a lot of the action that was in the book was taken out in the movies. Like a whole entire subplot with Erica Berger, Mikhail's uh, co-worker and lover. All of the action that happens in the third movie is like mental battles with people and solutions and the action happens in the background like spying or surveillance of people from a distance. And it's like that in the book of course but the writing just makes it so much more interesting and doesn't carry off as well in a film. All in all the books are better than the movies and they're much more well crafted for their respective medium than the movies are as movies. Although there was one scene in the second film that I absolutely loved, there's a moment when Mikhail and his sister are sitting in the back seat of a car and they've just been through some trauma so they hug, but they hug in a way that neither of their faces show in the camera. And you may have noticed, but in American film and television, when two people hug or embrace, either one or both of their faces will always show in the camera. And it's just so unnatural. People just don't hug like that. So I just really appreciated that moment in The Girl Who Played With Fire. Speaking of American film, I haven't seen the US version of Girl With A Dragon Tattoo, but I'm looking forward to watching it at some point, and if you've seen it, you should definitely let me know what you think. And same if you've read the books or seen the Swedish versions. Actually, it's pretty funny because before I read any of the books, I knew very little about the plot, and based on the titles and the covers, for some reason, I had assumed that each book was about a different girl and I think I also thought that they were Asian or at least the first one was and the other two were different ethnicities. I have no idea why I thought that. Maybe because dragons are such an important part of Asian culture but I was so way off base. But yeah, I loved the books. They're so so good. I read them mostly in January, February, and March, and then I started reading Game of Thrones, and I'm currently about halfway through the second book, and I'm really loving those as well. So when I finish the second book and after the second season on TV is over, I'll probably do a book to TV show comparison. And I also have my first book haul coming up. I'm just waiting for one more book to arrive. It's taking forever. And I would have had this video out to you a week ago, but last week I had a cold and I still have a bit of a cough, but I'm feeling much, much better. So as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, or add me on Goodreads. Say hi in the comments. I'd love to hear from you all. See you later. Also, what did you think of the new intro? I really like it. Okay, bye.